The Gospel for today is from Matthew chapter 18. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him and said that he could not pay. His Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and his children and all his possessions, and a payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. But out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused and then went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went to and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in, in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So, my heavenly Father, I will, will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from the heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Shalom is a kind of indescribable word in English, I think. But one way to say it might be that the Gospel stories are about Jesus bringing shalom to God's broken creation healing, love, and grace. God's creation involves all living things, all of creation. All of creation is in relationship, relationships between God and God's people and within God's people, within each other. Today's lesson is a parable that focuses on the importance of (coughs) repairing brokenness in relationships. As disciples, we are followed or we are called to follow what Jesus did. Be Jesus' hands and voice on earth. Heal the sick, free the oppressed, clothe and feed the poor and hungry, learn the word and spread the good news of God's saving grace. A grace for which we did nothing to deserve. That grace includes forgiveness for all our sins that we have done, are doing, and will ever do. A forgiveness we received again, for which we did nothing to deserve. So in this gospel for today, Jesus tells a parable about this forgiveness. There is a king and two servants. The first servant is called in by the king to settle up what he owes. The amount is extreme, like multiple lifetimes worth of wages. The servant falls on the the ground and pleads for mercy, saying, Have patience with me, I will pay you. The king takes pity on him and forgives his huge debt. Right after this happens, Jesus tells that the first servant comes across the second servant and demands payment, as did the king. But this amount is much, much smaller. In this encounter, the first servant grabs the second servant by the throat. And Jesus carefully tells the parable such that the second second servant used basically the same phrase. Have patience with me, and I will repay you. But unlike the king, the first servant pays no pity on him, takes no pity on him, and does not forgive the debt, and throws the second servant in jail until he could pay. What is going through the first servant's mind? Or what may be what may we interpret from Jesus' parable about the first servant? I think Jesus may want us to see that the first servant did not accept the forgiveness of the king into his heart. If he had, he probably would have seen a way to forgive the second servant 
for such a much lesser amount. Instead, it appears as if he, the first servant is angry. His anger could have come from a variety of things, I guess. Vulnerability of having to plead for patience, embarrassment for not being able to pay, and being called out by the king because of it, shamefulness in allowing the debt to, to the king to get so out of control. Something got in the way of him accepting the forgiveness from the king with a glad and joyful heart. And that same something, whatever it was, manifested itself in him by not passing along the same forgiveness that he had just received. We know as Christians that our sins are forgiven through the abundant grace of God in the giving of God's Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for all our sin of the world that has ever happened and will ever happen. But despite this, how often have we seen others say or do things or have said or done things ourselves to come between each other as God's children, to, to create brokenness in our relationships? And when this happened, or happens, are we reluctant to forgive as God has done for us? It's not easy to forgive. People hurt each other. It may be a harsh word from a co-worker in the office, name-calling on the playground at school, children who haven't found time to visit their aging parents, children who can't seem to get quality time with their parents, or maybe something more aggressive like, can a father forgive a man who kept a, his daughter chained up in a container for months out in the middle of a field? A man who also murdered his daughter's boyfriend? Or can a mother forgive the man who was intoxicated at 7 a.m. in the morning and drove his car into her car as they were, as he, she and her son were headed out to school an accident which eventually killed their 13 year old son? Can, can the classmates or friends or grandparents of that boy forgive that man? Or other things like, can people who lost a son or daughter due to police brutality ever forgive the police officer? Can the spouse of a police officer who's killed in the line of duty ever forgive the perpetrator? We read or hear about these things happening here in God's creation, creating a brokenness so painful that it's hard to imagine. A brokenness that permeates our families, communities, and our society. So we have received forgiveness from God for our sins through the death of Jesus Christ. But will we extend forgiveness to someone who does the unthinkable to us or to the ones we love? If not, these things come between us. They inhibit us from fully loving each other. They prevent us from loving each other as God loves us. Lack of forgiveness is another way in which God's creation stays broken. So based on the parable for today, in response to receiving God's forgiveness, we are called to do the same. But wow, it is not necessarily a quick process, and it's certainly not easy, because it needs to come from the heart. In that last verse, Jesus talks about forgiving our brother or sister from your heart. There is judgment kind of language here, basically saying how it won't be good if we don't find some way to forgive. I think this underscores that God knows what is in our hearts and knows if we have truly forgiven someone. This parable is another example where Jesus urges the disciples to let go of anything any brokenness standing in their way of finding peace, tranquility, love, and forgiveness in their hearts. Jesus wants all these things for them, this shalom, to be deep within them, at their very core maybe, in their heart. He talks about this in several other places in Matthew, how what comes from the heart is what someone truly feels, not from their minds alone, nor from their mouths, but in their hearts. Only God knows what's in our hearts. So the good news here is that God's forgiveness knows no bounds, and God wants shalom for us, forgiveness and repaired relationship for us. In the parable, the king shows mercy and grace, even though its servants 
it's the servant's debt is extreme. There's no way for the first servant ever could repay it. But the king's forgiveness knows no bounds. And he wants a repaired relationship with the servant, with nothing coming between them. And the king wants this forgiveness for the relationship between his two servants also. Not just the forgiveness of the debt, the second servant, but to bring the two servants back together into relationship with each other. To heal the brokenness from the heart. God, the king in this parable, wants forgiveness and shalom for God's children. As God's children, maybe we need to forgive ourselves first or forgive ourselves for being vulnerable and realize that we are human. I've had a pretty good life outside of the fray for the most part, but should something terrible happen to me or the ones that I love or care about, I hope that I could react like the people of Mother Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, how they reacted to the ast with astounding trust in God and remarkable forgiveness for the man who murdered nine members of that church during a Bible study. I'm sure you've heard this before, but in forgiving, it's not about them. It's about us. It's about the first servant who could not extend the same love that the king extended to him for whatever reason his vulnerability or whatever else may be going through his mind. Feeling vulnerable, feeling uncomfortable, we don't like it. Sometimes it makes us grouchy or angry, like something is bothering us, but we can't identify it exactly. Are we still going to, to like ourselves once we forgive the others, the other, or will our pride and distaste for vulnerability make us angry with ourselves, kind of like the first servant, I think? Some think that our body reacts adversely when we are unresolved in our lives. I think God created in us the need in ourselves to be forgiven, to feel forgiven. A feeling of brokenness and until we finally forgive another or are forgiven by another. The Holy Spirit provides this feeling and, guide and guidance in us. In this way, we know how important it is. I think in this way, God urges us into a willingness to forgive, a willingness to see a path forward. God helps us realize that forgiveness is as much for the giver as the receiver. God gives us patience through the prayer and meditation to know that forgiveness is sometimes isn't easy and sometimes isn't quick, especially when it comes from the heart. God gives us family and friends to support us in our efforts and, and gives us professionals, if we need them, to help us on our journey of forgiveness. God provides a constant reminder through the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, the prayer that, when, that we say individually and together as God's children for forgiveness for our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. God continues to shower us with grace each day, and God gives us the courage to show grace in bringing, breaking down barriers between us to forgive each other, to work in the kingdom each day to continue what Jesus started in bringing shalom to God's broken creation, to shower us with grace and to shower others with grace as love and love as God has done, is doing, and will continue to do. Thanks be to God.